Hi, welcome back to the poetry series. Today we're in episode 14, and um, as promised, I will be reading a kind of more personal, more personal poem than you've already heard, if you can believe it. <laughs> Such a thing does exist. Uh, so I have a very um, complicated, tumultuous relationship with my father. Uh, we haven't spoken in six years. And this poem is actually what started the whole series. I wrote it, I shared it with my sister a couple weeks ago, and um, she suggested that I publish my poetry. Um, so it started with, as some of you might know, a call to ask people on Facebook uh, if anyone knows about how to publish poetry. And... Um, seems like being unpublished means it's hard to get published straight off. So whilst I apply for a chapbook and a magazine publication, I thought I would start doing this series. So here we are 14 days later and coming back to the beginning. So this is called A Poem for My Father. Uh, and it's very vulnerable for me to share. Uh, so go easy on me. You sprang to my mind today, perhaps crept into my mind, emerged through the cobwebs, broke, cracked, damaged the icy surface of the lake of memories I thought I drowned you in. Better ways to express how you, like an unwanted apparition, came to my thoughts today. I almost never think of you at all. It's not that you are forgettable, though you are as much as some of your words, your actions are not. It's that I feel, finally, certain that you are not worth an iota of my heart space. And as you told me too often, I am too sensitive. I tend to think with my heart. Shame. Shame is a drug you got me hooked on. Whenever I use shame on myself, I am doing what you conditioned me to do. A child does not understand textbook psych, but I do not need a degree to see, I see, I see. The image of yourself that you hated, that you projected on me. Shame. It's like picking a scab off, like adding salt to a wound. I know I shouldn't. I'll hear, heal faster if I let it be. But the habit, the pain, the pick, pick, picking at a thing until it bleeds is what you taught me. Today I know who you are. Enough. Enough to know. I don't want to know, don't want the people I love to know your many poisons. I pity you, really. You're getting old. Things you could once bury in, charms you could once use to fool people who once feared or respected you through fear are slipping through your grasp. There's so little you understand, though like a tired magician's act, you once presented your many knowledges with smoke and mirrors. I pity you, really. Your candle's all but flickering out. You've so little left to burn. And the mirror you held up to my face to show my reflection distorted, clouded, bruised, shattered long ago, and you and your old man feet stand stood on the shards. Your heart is so cold, I wonder whether you bleed. That is unfair, perhaps. It reflects poorly on me. I am not casting a spell. I wish you no harm. I hope in your next life you find a better outlet for your energies. I have grievances, sure. But I wish you no harm. In fact, I wish you nothing at all. I am freed of you and my liberation is why the creeping remembrance of your mere existence caused me pause today. Only enough to write to say, I am free. I am free. So, um, thank you for watching. 
I will be back tomorrow, probably at a different time, same place.